This is Garden of the Tomb. This is a genuine first century Jewish wine press. Don't touch it, leave it alone. Because of course once the Jewish antiquities see something, you've got to leave it exactly as it is. And it's a very large wine press and there are two other wine presses in the area. So now we know the site here was a vineyard. Now put the story together. Near to Golgotha, where the buses are where Jesus was crucified outside the city, outside the entrance of the city, on the place of stoning on the north side of the city, near to where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden which was a vineyard. In that garden vineyard was a wine press, three wine presses. All the system. And also a tomb. A new tomb. Second Temple period Jewish water system. Don't touch it, leave it alone. This was here at the time of Jesus. Who built it? Well, that was cut out of the rock with a hammer and chisel. Yes. Unbelievable. Sit on the floor if necessary, sit on the seats. Floor was invented before seats were. Just sit over that side somewhere under the shade. Okay, just might be better if you sit over that or sit in there, so I'm, you, you need me to look at the front of the tomb, that's fine. Just get up. Okay, just squeeze up somewhere over there. Okay, now you're looking at the front of the tomb. Don't look at the concrete blocks. The concrete blocks are recent. They were put there about 100 years ago, probably because the side of the tomb fell in from an earth tremor. Remember, Israel, Jerusalem is earthquake prone. We get about 25 or so small earth tremors many times in the year, about 25 a year. Many times you read about them in the Bible about earthquakes. And of course we're waiting for the big one. When the Mount of Olives is going to be split from north to south, read your Bibles, watch yes. this space. A lot of exciting things are going to happen to this city of Jerusalem. Keep on praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Remember I told you the world's television cameras are on this city. It's all going to happen around this city. Mentioned 850 times in the Bible. Nothing about New York or Los Angeles. Or London, but keep on praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Now when you go in, you'll see it is not a natural cave. It's a man-made construction hewn out of the rock. Exactly what the Bible says. I'm standing on the rock. For you aspiring preachers, there's a sermon there. This is Mount Moriah limestone rock. One big lump of limestone rock that Jerusalem is built on. Slopes down to the highest point here. That's the top of Mount Moriah. Read your Bibles, Genesis 22, Abraham offered Isaac. David built the altar on the threshing floor of Arona. Solomon began to build the temple all on Mount Moriah, all the way down through the old city where the temple plaza is, the Dome of the Rock, down to the city of David in the south between the Hinnon and Kidron valleys, all one big lump of limestone rock. Then in front of the entrance of the tomb where these good looking gentlemen is, you'll see there is a stone channel cut out of the solid rock. Can you see it? That stone channel is of course for the rolling stone. Not mm -hmm. Mick Jagger and his merry men. Mm -hmm. They weren't around at the time, thank goodness. But yeah. remember, the That's Romans so sealed the tomb with a large rolling stone. We never found the original stone. 
There's a small stone on the wall there behind that, next to that good looking gentleman over there. That stone came from another village 10 miles away. We think the original stone was at least two meters high, or in English words, seven or eight feet high, 12 inches wide to fit in the slot. If so, it would have weighed at least four or five tons. The Bible says it was exceedingly large. Remember the story in the Bible, the women who came to the tomb on the first Easter Sunday morning said, who will roll for us the stone away from the door? No forward planning, was there? But we know the answer, don't we? What the Bible says, the Bible says an angel rolled away the stone. And in one gospel he says he sat on it, just out of contempt for the Roman authorities. That's what he thought of that. No trouble for an angel to roll away a stone. But he rolled away the stone not to let Jesus out, but to let the women folk in. I can tell you those women, when they came on that first Easter Sunday morning, they were scared. You read the words in your Bible, they feared exceedingly. They were sore afraid. Would you be frightened? If you'd been with Jesus for three years, you'd seen all the miracles, the crowds, the feeding of the 5,000, you'd seen Jesus crucified on the cross, you'd seen Jesus taken down from the cross and put in the tomb, you'd seen the tomb sealed with a great big stone, come back three days later. Not only was the stone rolled away, but the body had gone. Hallelujah! What is it the angel said? He's not here. He's alive. He's risen. Why seek the living amongst the dead? Wow, if you met that first thing on a Sunday morning, wouldn't you be frightened? Say yes. Well, I know the American army's not frightened, but still, not a matter. Those women, they were scared. Now you've got here a plan of the tomb. When you go in, you go into the entrance where my finger is. So my finger is the entrance. When you go in, you go into what is called the weeping chamber. Remember, if you are a rich man, you would hire professional mourners to weep, to cry over your body. Well, you'd hire them before you died, not after you died. That's an English joke just to make sure you're still awake. But this is how we know it's a rich man's tomb. The Bible says he made his grave with the rich. Check it out, Isaiah 53, written 600 years beforehand, predicting Jesus will be buried in a rich man's tomb. This is a rich man's garden. All this stone here has all been cut out by hand. All the rock faces have all been cut out by hand. Only a rich man could do this. Only a rich man could dig out the water system. Only a rich man would have a weeping chamber. This is a rich man's tomb. This is a rich man's garden. Now where my fingers are are the two locali. The locali are the places where the bodies are laid. The first one here has never been used. The Bible says in a tomb in which no man had ever been laid. The second one here where my finger is has a small area cut out for the feet and a stone pillow because the Jews would leave the locolite unfinished till they knew the size of the body then quickly finish it off. If this is the tomb of Jesus, he'd be in the position here, which is exactly in one line with what the Bible says. It says, stooping down, the disciples saw on the right. Check it out in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. On the right-hand side. They didn't see the body, it wasn't there. But they saw an angel, they saw a grave closed neatly folded up on the right hand side. Doesn't prove it's a tomb of Jesus, but everything fits in exactly what the Bible says. Now you've seen many tombs in your country. And under each one of those tombs is a dead man's bones. This one's different. Why is it different? Because it's empty. And why is it empty? Because Jesus rose from the grave, hallelujah. And where's Jesus now? He's in heaven, yes. All those who know him and love him as their Lord and Saviour, one day are going to be with him. Doesn't it give you something to look forward to? Doesn't it give you an answer to the mess that this world is in? Say yes. And if you get there before I do, look out for me, because I'm coming too. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Lord, I pray for the American army. I pray that God will richly bless you and give you peace. And if this visit means anything to you, you go back to your mums, your dads, your husbands, wives and kids and wherever it is. Tell them what Jesus has done for you. Tell them to come to Israel if they can. Not everyone can come to Israel. But my Bible says, those that bless Israel, I will bless. So if you want God's blessing on your marriage, on your wife, your husband, your kids, or whatever it is, your pastor, your church, then you bless this land of Israel. So thank you for coming to Israel. Thank you for coming to the garden. 
make your way in, ask any question, but I've got another party to take round, so thank you very much for coming. Watch where you're walking the ground is uneven, and God bless the American Army. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Get in, get out. Yeah, get in, out. Don't touch stuff. Take the face. Right. Now lay him down. Good picture. This is where the stone was at. Hold in front. He's going to have a bunch of exhibits when you get up to the gate. Remember this one? Yeah, look at you. Remember this one? Yeah, this was you. That's the point now. Everybody else got a book you have to file in You know, actually, that'd be kind of humorous. see the Wailing Wall even if we go to Bethlehem though, right? Thank you. 